Hello students, welcome to 60 out of 60 in KSET Chemistry in 2025 series. So as you all know, we have started a series where we are going to cover each and every topic that is going to be asked in your KSET 2025 chemistry examination. We are going to solve a lot of questions and a number of PYQs will also be done simultaneously, right? So yes, welcome to video number two of this series where we are going to cover today's solutions part two which covers the topic of vapor pressure and ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions. So one important request from my side in this point is please join our WhatsApp channel. The link of the WhatsApp channel will be there in the description section of this video. Now why it is important because the PDF of these notes will be available in our WhatsApp channel. The questions that we'll be giving you will also be available in our WhatsApp channel, right? So please join it so that you do not miss any of these things, right? Okay, so now let's get started with the topic that is vapor pressure and ideal and non-ideal solutions okay so now uh, before starting here i'll just explain you that how am i going to cover this particular chapter so there will be three parts of this uh, chapter today we are in part two in part one we have already covered the types of solutions concentration terms and solubility so if you haven't watched these uh, part one of this uh, topic so the link of this video will also be there in our description section please go that watch it and then you can watch this so that you can understand it in a better way now coming to part two that is today's video where we'll be covering vapor pressure and ideal and non-ideal solutions next the next coming part for this chapter will be part three where we'll be covering colligative properties and abnormal molar mass so you can see this chapter we have divided in seven topics and in three lectures part one part two and part three okay so please make sure that you watch all the parts so that you get a complete understanding of this chapter you will be able to solve the pyqs and you will be able to solve any questions that is asked from this particular chapter okay so now coming to uh, why this chapter is very important so i discussed it in, in my previous video also you would have seen that in every year you can easily expect three to five questions from this particular chapter right three to five questions so which is really a great number to score very good marks in your KSET chemistry examination so this chapter is a must do topic and cannot be ignored at any cost okay so now coming to today's topic that is part two we will be discussing vapor pressure and ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions i have already told you now in vapor pressure we will be discussing vapor pressure in liquid liquid solutions and vapor pressure in solid liquid solutions okay these two topics will be covered in vapor pressure then we'll be discussing about ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions i hope this is clear okay now let's jump to the topic now before understanding uh, vapor pressure in liquid liquid solutions vapor pressure in solid liquid solution first let us understand ma'am what is vapor pressure right so let us understand it very simple words what is vapor pressure okay so two things you need to remember that vapor pressure can be observed in closed system okay the system must be closed okay and when it is observed first point and when it is observed when the rate of evaporation rate of evaporation is equal to rate of condensation now listen first of all for vapor pressure to absorb to for vapor pressure to be created two things we need one is the uh, system should be closed and the rate of evaporation and rate of condensation should be equal okay now let us understand what is vapor pressure so now if you see this is a closed container okay we have this liquid and we have this particles red particles are there now what happens when equilibrium is reached okay at when the equilibrium is reached what will happen at that time the number of particles that is going from liquid phase to vapor phase will be equal to the number of particles coming from vapor phase to liquid phase so now you see suppose one particle is going and then one particle will come back right so now if you see in liquid phase how many particles are there let me count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 right so i am just writing like this in liquid phase we have nine particles and in vapor phase if you see we have one and two two particles right now what happens one particle goes from liquid phase to vapor phase right so at that time what will happen this one will become eight right and this one will become three 
Now, at the same time, this particle comes back to the liquid phase. So, again what will happen? This one will become again 9, this one will become again 9 and this one will again become 2. So, you see at any point of time the number of particles in the liquid phase and the number of particles in the vapor phase are equal. So, this is the point where the equilibrium has reached. Okay. Now, understood what is the meaning of rate of evaporation is equal to rate of condensation. Okay. Now, why these particles come back? Why these particles come back to the liquid phase? Okay. That is because the molecules <coughs> the molecules in the vapor phase collide with the walls and the lead of the container causing the pressure. Okay. So, when they collide they lose their energy and they come back to the liquid phase. Now, evaporation and condensation occur at the liquid surface. So, at this point this uh, change happens in okay we will come back to this later at equilibrium the evaporation equals the rate of condensation okay now what is then finally ma'am tell us what is vapor pressure we have told so many things so vapor pressure is when these two things are there when the system is closed when the rate of evaporation and rate of condensation is equal whatever pressure is exerted by these gas particles Okay, whatever pressure is exerted by these gas particles on the walls of the container is called as vapor pressure. Clear? So, if I write it in simple words, ma'am tell us in simple words, then what is it? So, vapor pressure, I will write here, vapor pressure is the pressure exerted okay, by gas at equilibrium okay at equilibrium in closed system i hope this is clear so what are the two things that so i can i hope everybody can see the definition here so vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the gas okay in a closed container when the system is at equilibrium now if somebody ask you ma'am uh, like what do you mean by the system is at equilibrium the system is at equilibrium means rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation is equal now again someone tells i am not understanding rate of evaporation and rate of condensation is equal means then you have to tell the number of particles going from vapor phase to the uh, number of particles going from liquid phase to vapor phase and the number of particles coming from vapor phase to liquid phase are equal and as a result of which the concentration remains constant okay i hope this concept of vapor pressure is very very clear okay now let us go to the topic that is vapor pressure in liquid liquid solutions okay now vapor pressure in liquid liquid solution what do you mean by liquid liquid solution in a solution there are two components one is solute one is solvent right so both the uh, like solute is also liquid solvent is also liquid then we call this liquid liquid solution okay now here what is this Raoult's law so now for a solution of volatile liquids so there are two liquids a and b and both are volatile now volatile means what they can both evaporate okay for a solution of volatile liquids the vapor pressure of each component of the solution the vapor pressure of each component of the solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction present in the solution okay so what this is saying suppose we am having a container okay I am having a container and I have two liquids here. So, suppose I have A here okay, and I have another liquid B here. Right? Some pressure, vapor pressure of A will be created and vapor pressure of B will be created. Now, the vapor pressure of A is proportional to the mole fraction of A and pressure of B will be proportional to mole fraction of B. That is what is told by Raoult's law. P1 is proportional to X1 or PA is proportional to XA. Okay? Now, let us see this one. So, you can see here we have a uh, mixture where this red balls and green balls are there, right? Both are evaporating, both are creating vapor pressure here, right? So, what is the pressure due to A? What is the pressure due to A? So, you can see PA will be proportional to mole fraction of A. And what is the pressure of, uh, okay, so now what is the pressure of B? PB is proportional to mole fraction of B, right? Now, what happens here? Suppose I will tell you now what is this P naught A to remove this proportionality we multiply a constant. So, the constant multiplied here is P naught A and the uh, constant multiplied here is P naught B. Now, what is this P naught A and P naught B? See P naught A is the pure pressure of A, pure pressure 
of A. Means what? What do you mean by pure pressure of A? Means suppose I will take a container okay, and I have only A particles there okay, and these A particles are evaporating. So, here some pressure will be created. So, the pressure created where only A particles are there that is called pure pressure of A, P not A. And similarly here, what is P not B? P not B is pure pressure of B. Pure pressure of B. Right. So, now how this pure pressure of B? That means in the container only B is there and at that time what pressure is created? That is called pure pressure of B, P not B. Then what is this P A and P B? P A is the pressure of A pressure of A in solution okay in this mixture in this mixture here some pressure of you can see this green bot, uh, dots are there they will create some pressure that is the pressure of B the red dots will create some pressure that is the pressure created by A right. So, what is this pressure the pressure here is denoted as P A pressure of B here is denoted as P B a P A is a mole fraction of A into P naught A and the P B is equal to mole fraction of B in the solution into P naught B clear. I hope this is clear then what is P B? P B is the pressure of B in the solution pressure of B in the mixture or I can write in the mixture ok. I will also write here in the mixture or in the solution you can write also in the mixture. I hope you are getting this one once again let me repeat in the container there are two solutions A and B. A is creating pressure, B is creating pressure. A is evaporating, there is some vapors of A because of which there is a pressure of A. There is B also evaporating, there is some particles of B, there are some vapors of B because of which that is also creating some pressure. So, that is called as PA and that is called as PB. Now, PA is equal to mole fraction of A into P naught A. P naught is the pure pressure of A. You have taken like that is a constant value. When you take only A what pressure is created that is called as P naught A. Similarly, when you take only B whatever is the pressure created that is called as P naught B right. So, P naught A X A is equal to P A, P B is equal to P naught B X B ok. Now, we calculated what is the pressure of A here, what is the pressure of B here. Now, if someone asks what is the total pressure here, total pressure. So, that is given by our next law that is Dalton's law. What is De Dalton's law? According to Dalton's law of partial pressure, the total pressure over the solution phase is in the container will be the sum of the partial pressures of the components of the solution. So, in the solution what are the components A and B? The pressure due to A is P A, the pressure due to B is P B. So, the total pressure there will be P A plus P B right. So, you can see here. So, the total pressure I will write like this, the total pressure is equal to P A plus P B right. Now, how I can write P A? P A can be written as P naught A X A and this can be written as P naught B into X B right. So, this is the formula that will be used in questions, mostly will be used in questions ok. To solve questions will be requiring this particular formula getting everyone. Now, there is some uh, like modification also we can do in this particular formula that we will see now modified formula ok. So, now you see I will explain this one P, P t is equal to P naught B X B plus P naught A X A just now we saw that right. Now, there is a relation between X A and X B if you remember X A plus X B is equal to 1 in my last class I told you mole fraction relation x a plus x b is equal to 1 then can I write this x b as 1 minus x a can we write like this yes. So, what will happen now I will write this x b as 1 minus x a. So, that is what I have substituted here p naught b 1 minus x a plus p naught a into x a. Now, multiply this here p naught b minus p naught b into x a plus p naught a into x a. Now, again if you see this is p naught b then I will take x a common here. So, x a is taken common p naught a minus p naught b. So, I can write this equation in the terms of only one element 
in terms of a in terms of mole fraction of a this equation can be written right similarly you will be now question like ma'am why can't we take this as 1 minus xb that is also correct so that expression is also possible so the point here is we can what is the conclusion here is the p total okay can be expressed can be expressed in terms of mole fraction in terms of mole fraction of any one component in terms of mole fraction of any one component whether it is x a or x b but we can use any one component to express the total pressure that is what the conclusion we need to take from here okay okay so now there is a small graph from here you can see this graph is there in your ncrt book also so this one so x1 is the mole fraction of so here the components are taken x1 and x2 not a and b so x1 and x2 right two components are there so here x1 is taken as 1 and x2 is 0 so x1 means what x2 is 0 here so at that time the pressure for p uh, p2 p2 will be equal to 0 right because what we know p2 is equal to x2 into p02 right now if this part is 0 then I can write p2 is equal to 0 so that is why in this side there is no component of p2 right and now when there is no x2 so, I said, uh, so when there is no x2 that means what it is a pure component of 1 so that pure component of 1 what will be the pressure p01 similarly here it is p02 now from here so you can see as the mole fraction is changing from x uh, x1 to x1 is equal to 1 to x1 is equal to 0 right pressure is proportional to mole fraction if mole fraction is decreasing pressure will also decrease so you see now for 1 first if you see the 1 x1 is in uh, from 1 to 0 it is changing right so it is decreasing so you see the graph here it is decreasing right now if you see here x2 what is happening from for x2 from left to right 0 to 1 it is increasing so you see the pressure of p2 is also increasing this is p1 this is p2 and when you join these two we get the total pressure that is p1 plus p2 clear okay now coming to one more thing here we have discussed that in uh, this one let me draw the diagram again so we have this container okay this is a closed container and here we have the solution okay and here we have two components so I have a components okay and I have b components so I will take b components here okay so a is green and white one is b now what is happening this is a closed container now what happens this two will evaporate right this one will evaporate and this one will also evaporate now after evaporating there will be some a here in the vapor phase and there will be some b also in the vapor phase right now that x a and x b that we are calculating this is the this is x a and this is x b what is this mole fraction mole fraction in liquid phase Now, this uh, when they come to the vapor phase, its concentration can also be represented. So, that we use a different terminology to represent them. We use this one and tell them as Ya and Yb. What are this Ya and Yb? Mole fraction in vapor phase. Mole fraction, okay, mole fraction in vapor phase. Okay, mole fraction in vapor phase. This is clear. Mole fraction in liquid phase, and then we have mole fraction in vapor phase. Now, what happens? Then, how can we calculate Y A and Y B? That is the formula here. Y A uh, P A is equal to P total into Y A, and P B is equal to P total into Y B. So, what will be Y A equal to here? I will use different pen. So, Y A will be equal to P A by p total right and similarly yb will be equal to pb 
by p total. Now, how can we get this p total? p total is p naught a x a plus p naught b x b. Okay, we will do a question from here so that it is completely clear to you. Okay, now the question has come here. Uh, okay, now let us read the question. Vapor pressure of chloroform CHCl3 and dichloromethane at 298 Kelvin are 200 mm of Hg and 400 mm of Hg respectively. So, vapor pressure of chloroform is given to you separately and vapor pressure of dichloromethane is given you separately. So, what are these values? So, if you can identify them, these are pure pressures. So, pure pressure of CHCl3 is equal to 200 mm of Hg, right? And pure pressure of CH2Cl2 is equal to your uh, 415 mm of Hg, right. Next what data we have? Next we have been given with calculate the vapor pressure of the solution means the total vapor pressure of the solution which is obtained by mixing 25.5 gram of CHCl3. So, what is this much? 25.5 gram and how much is this one? CH2Cl2 this one is around uh, 40 gram right at 298 kelvin so now we need to calculate the uh, total vapor pressure so first let us see what are the top uh, what are the for, what is the formula for total vapor pressure that is p not uh, i'll write chcl3 into mole fraction of chcl3 plus p not of ch2cl2 into mole fraction of CH2Cl2, right. So, we know these P0 values, right, but we need to calculate this mole fraction value. So, let us calculate the mole fraction for this one. So, first let us calculate the number of moles of CH3, number of mol molar mass of CHCl3. So, if you add this one, total number of uh, moles of CHCl3 will get around 100, the molar mass is 119.5, right. Now, let us calculate the number of moles of CHCl3 that will be given mass by molar mass ok. So, 25.5 divided by 199, uh, 199 will get 0 0.213 ok that is number of moles of CHCl3. Now, let us calculate the mole fraction here ok. So, mole fraction of CHCl3 ok ok before that I will calculate the number of moles of CHCl2 also right ok. So, Okay, I will write here mass of CH2Cl2 okay, that is your 85. So, number of moles of CH2Cl2 will be how much? Given mass is how much? Given mass is 40 gram and the molar mass is 85, 40 by 85. So, which is uh, around 0 0.6, 0 0.47. Okay. Now, we can calculate the number of moles. Now, we can calculate the mole fraction. So, mole fraction of this one will be N of CHCl3 divided by N of CHCl3 plus N of CH2Cl2. Okay. Now, let us go to the next page and do the calculation. Once you can see here, I okay, will go to the next page and write down the data here. So, what all data we have got now? Number of moles of CHCl3 is equal to how much? 0 0.213. Okay and number of moles of CH2Cl2 is how much? 0 0.47, okay. So, now we are calculating the mole fraction. So, I will calculate here mole fraction of CHCl3, CHCl3. So, that is equal to number of moles of CHCl3 by number of moles of CHCl3 plus number of moles of CH2Cl2. Now, substitute the data here, we will get 0 0.213 divided by 0 0.213 plus 0 0.47, right. So, now if I calculate this, I will be getting around 0 0.31. Now, from here I can calculate the moles of CH2Cl2, right, that will be 1 minus 0 0.31. So, that will be equal to 0 0.69. I got both the mole fraction. Now, my task is to calculate the total pressure. So, if you remember the P naught of CHCl3 is 200 gram. So, let us calculate P total. P total is P naught of CHCl3 into X of CHCl3 plus 
P naught of C H 2 C L 2 into X of C H 2 C L 2. So, now if you see what is the P naught value, P naught value of C H C L 3 is 200, right? X of C H C L 3 is uh, 0.31, right? Then I have plus P naught of C H 2 C L 2 is 415 and this one is 0 0.69. Right. So, now if I solve this, I will be getting around 348.35, okay, 348.35 will be getting. Now, the question does not end here. The question has also asked you to calculate the mole fraction of each component in the vapor phase. So, if you see vapor phase, suppose I want to calculate Y of CHCl3. So, that will be equal to P of CHCl3 by P total, right. Now, P of CHCl3 will be how much? This one, P naught A into XA, so 200 into 0 0.31, right? Divided by the total pressure, total pressure is 348.35, right? So, now if I solve this, right, we will be getting around 0 0.177, okay? Now, if you calculate Y of CH2Cl2, Similarly, YA plus YB is also equal to 1 like how XA and XB is equal to 1. So, I will get 1 minus 0 0.177, okay. So, that will be equal to 0 0.823, clear. So, what are my answers here? So, my answers here are total pressure that is this one, okay, total pressure, then mole fraction in the vapor phases. Now, a question may arise ma'am, these many calculations, how are we going to do in the exam? So, this was a question from your MCRT. This question I have just taken to give you a practice of the formulas. But in exam, a very easy like numbers which can be very easily multiplied, very easily divide such type of questions have been asked. I will also show you that PYQ, okay. So, do not worry that how these calculations have come because in exam, you will not get so many big, big numbers calculation, okay. Now, coming to uh, the next topic that is vapor pressure in solid and liquid solution, okay. So, here something is there what we need to understand, very simple thing, see, I told you that two components when I added in a solution, both has to be volatile, right, then we are getting a pressure that is created at the top. Now, suppose what happens, you have added both A and B, but A is one component which is not volatile, it is not evaporating, right, only B is evaporating, then what will happen, what in that case, that is A, this A is your solid here, okay. A is solid which is non-volatile. So, what happens when a non-volatile solute is added? That is what we are going to study here. So, very simply let us understand, in a pure liquid, the entire surface is occupied by the molecules of liquid. So, suppose you see this example, this is a pure solvent, all the layer, first layer is occupied by the solvent molecules. Now, if a non-volatile solute is added to a solvent to give a solution, the vapor pressure of the solution is solely from the solvent alone. Now, because the solute is non-volatile, because it cannot evaporate, if it cannot evaporate, it cannot create pressure. So, in that case, the pressure is solely due to the solvent. The solute is not evaporating, only the solvent can evaporate. So, the pressure that is created, that will be created, will only be because of the solvent, right? That is clear here. Now, this vapor pressure of the solution at a given temperature is found to be lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent at the at the same temperature. So, you can see here, this is a pure solvent taken and this is a pure solvent with some solute is added. If you calculate the vapor pressure here created at the same temperature, you can see the pressure here will be more. You can see more number of vapors here. Here the pressure will be less. Now, what is the reason for that? That is very simple here. In the solution where you have added solute, the surface has both solute and the solvent molecules. So, you can see here some blue green molecules are there. Green molecules are also there. The solvent part is occupied, right? So, now what happens? the fraction of the surface covered by the solvent molecules get reduced. So, suppose here you see all the part was covered by solvent. Here some part is solvent and some part is solute. So, now if you let us count and see. So, now if you see here uh, how many particles are there if it is a pure solvent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 particles were there which we can evaporate. Now, if you see here I have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. 
right only five particles are there so that is why the what happens the number of particles evaporating is less here and that is why the pressure created will be less okay so the vapor pressure is created due to the solvent only but when you add a solute the surface molecule is occupied by the solid particles as a result of which less number of solvent particles are there on the surface which can evaporate so if less number will evaporate less pressure will be created right that is the concept here okay now let us see the uh, so if you calculate the total pressure so before i show you the uh, total pressure let us try to do this calculation so p total will be equal to what we know p not a x a plus p not b x b right now out of this now a is a non volatile solute a is a non volatile solute means it will not evaporate if it is not evaporating it will not create any pressure so i can say that p not a will be equal to 0 so if this term is equal to 0 right or let us assume uh, okay for confusion i'll take b as non volatile solute okay b as non volatile solute because that is how it is given in the book uh, so that you don't confuse so p not b will be equal to 0 here also i'll change i'll make it uh, this solid is b okay i'll change here because in ncert book it is given like that so that you do not confuse so now p not b is zero that means this term becomes zero so what is the total pressure now p total will be equal to p not a and x a right so now if i draw a, okay now you can see p a will be proportional to x a only and p a is equal to p not a x a now if i draw a graph here a graph of total pressure and mole fraction so that you can see it will be a graph like this it will be only because of one particular component that is the solvent there is no graph for solute component here right okay now let us see the next part ideal and non ideal solutions this is very simple topic students but a very scoring topic now solutions are of two types that is ideal solutions which obeys the raoult's law and there is non ideal solution which does not obey the raoult's law now what do you mean by obey the raoult's law and does not obey the raoult's law so if the solution is obeying the raoult's law okay if it is obeying the raoult's law that then the total pressure will be equal to pressure of a plus pressure of b if it is not obeying the raoult's law that means the total pressure is not equal to pressure of a plus pressure of b not equal means it can either be greater or it can be either be lower so based on whether it is greater or lower we have two types of non ideal solutions one is positive deviation and one is negative deviation in positive deviation what happens i'll explain but in positive deviation you can know that p total is greater than pa plus pb okay and in negative deviation p total is less than pa plus pb okay and we have one more topic in the non ideal solutions that is azeotropes that we are going to cover now okay so now coming to ideal solutions and non ideal solutions the difference so obey raoult's law does not obey raoult's law the very first difference next what else property is there delta h mix is zero here delta h mix is not equal to zero means when you mix the two solutions the enthalpy change is zero here but the enthalpy change is not equal to zero here now v mix is equal to zero and delta v mix is not equal to zero here like for example if i tell uh, suppose i am mixing 5 ml of a plus 5 ml of b okay if they are forming an ideal solution then i'll get 10 ml finally but if in the same case i am having this one and they are forming a non ideal solution okay then the final volume will not be equal to 10 ml it can either be greater than 10 ml or it can be less than 10 ml okay so that is what delta v mix is not equal to 0 now coming to here what about the interactions so a particle is there b particle is there when you are mixing them a a will have some interaction b b will have some interaction but when you are mixing them the a b interaction is almost equal to a a and b b interaction then it is called ideal solution if the a a and a b sorry if the a b interactions are not equal to a and b interactions then we get non ideal solutions okay so now i'll be telling you what are this type of non ideal solutions so non ideal solutions are of two types positive deviation and negative deviation now what happens very very important to understand see positive deviation means i have told you that the total pressure will be greater than the uh, pressure of a and b right pressure of a plus pressure of b now i have mixed suppose a and b i have mixed okay now what happens 
A will evaporate to create Pa and B will evaporate to create Pb. Now what happens when I have mixed A and B, their interactions A and B are not interacting are not very weak interaction is there. So what will happen more A will evaporate more B will evaporate. So the total pressure will be greater than the pressure like greater than Pa plus Pb. Okay. Interaction is not there so more number of particles are evaporating as a result of which the vapor pressure increases. So first point here the uh, positive deviation AB interactions are weaker than AA and BB interactions. Okay. In negative deviation what happens A you have added B you have added they are very close they have become very very good friends. Okay. They have become very best friends now they do not want to leave each other and go. So less amount of A will go less amount of B will go so the pressure created there will be less that is why P, A, P total will be less than P A plus P B. Getting this one when you add added A and B okay. If it is a positive deviation the A and B are enemies they want to go far away from each other A is evaporating B is evaporating. So we are getting more particles in the vapor phase they want to hate each other they want to run away from each other ok. So more A and more B will evaporate. Now if A and B are negative deviation then what will happen they have very close friends they want do not want to leave each other and go. So less amount of A will go less amount of B will go as a result of which the pressure created there will be less ok. Next coming to here the total pressure will be more than P1 P1 x1 plus P2 x2 here the total pressure is less. Why there is high because more A and B has evaporated why it is less because less A and B has evaporated then delta H mix will be positive here delta H mix will be negative ok. So uh, this statement I has come uh, is not required here so I will remove this one ok one second. Okay. So now what we are having uh, next one if you see that okay. So now I uh, this statement is wrong here okay. So you can just cut this one okay. We will cut this one okay. Next we will go to the next one example. So ethanol and acetone are the examples of positive deviation CS2 and acetone are examples of positive deviation phenol and alanyl are negative chloroform and acetone are again negative deviation. Now how can you explain this? So there is no uh, explanation here ethanol and acetone see ethanol was having earlier hydrogen bonding they were very close now when you added acetone into it their hydrogen bonding has become weak right. So now more number of ethanols can evaporate because they are not bonded to each other. Similarly acetone would have dipole dipole interactions when you added CS2 in that that interactions are disrupted and the number of molecules evaporating is decreased now. Sorry the number of molecules evaporating has increased now okay because they are far away from each other. Now coming to uh, Phenol and alanyl. So phenol was having hydrogen bonding but when you added anilin phenol and alanyl will also have a very strong hydrogen bonding. You can see the structure of them. Phenol is like this OH right and we have anilin like this NH2 right. So there can be a hydrogen bonding here. So due to this hydrogen bonding what happens they have become very good friends now they are not leaving each other and going. So if they are not going to the vapor phase no vapor will be created if no vapor will be created then there will be negative deviation ok. So these are the examples so very very important questions have been asked from examples. So here I will write a note that examples are important examples are important. So your duty is to remember this examples ok. Now let us go to the next part here is a question negative deviation from Raoult's law is absorbed in which of the following. So negative deviation just now we saw acetone and chloroform so the correct answer for this question will be option number C ok. Now one more question the positive deviations from the Raoult's law means the vapor pressure. So what we have seen positive deviation means P total will be greater than P A plus P B right. The positive deviation from Raoult's law means the vapor pressure is higher than expected ok. Now why it is higher because interactions are weak right because the interactions are weak. Hope you are getting this one ok. Now coming to ideal and non ideal solutions next topic that is a graph for this one. So you can see for positive deviation what will happen everything will increase positive side. Okay. Now more P1 will evaporate more P2 will evaporate total pressure also increases in negative uh, deviation the 
graph comes towards the lower side because P2 is now attracted by P1, so less P2 will evaporate, so P2 pressure decreases, P1 pressure decreases, the total pressure also decreases. So, I will write here this is for positive deviation, this is for positive deviation and this is for negative deviation, okay. okay. Now, let us go to the next here one important topic that is azeotropes. I told you small topic is there about azeotropes. So, what is this azeotrope? Some properties that you should know that first of all they are binary mixtures means two components have been mixed in such a way. What is the uh, uh, what is the special feature here that they have the same composition in the liquid and the vapor phase. So, in the liquid and vapor phase the composition the number of particles in the liquid and in the vapor phase are same that is the second property and they boil at a constant temperature this is the third property they boil at a constant temperature such mixtures where there are two components okay they are having same composition in the liquid and the vapor phase and they boil at a constant temperature such mixtures are called as azeotropes okay now um, then what is the uh, impact implication of that it is not possible to separate the components by fractional distillation why can't we separate because they boil at the same component so if you have understood fractional distillation what happens in fractional distillation a and b suppose two components are there and you are boiling them right here we have a dist uh, what we call it uh, separating uh, this tube will be there where there is condensed condensation will happen. So, when you heat it out of this A and B which whose boiling point is less will first evaporate right and then it will go and will be collected here after that B will evaporate. Now, what happens in this azeotropic mixture A and B has the same boiling point they both will evaporate at the same time. So, what will happen if you are heating them both A and B will go and then condense and will collected here you cannot separate them. Okay. So, that is what is called as azeotropic mixture. Okay. Now, seeing uh, here uh, there are again two types of azeotropic mixture here minimum boiling azeotropes and maximum boiling azeotropes. So, what is minimum boiling azeotropes? Suppose you are mixing A and B. Okay. The boiling point of this mixture, okay, boiling point of this mixture will be less than the boiling points of A and B then we call it minimum boiling point. Maximum boiling azeotropes means if you are mixing A and B okay, the boiling point of this mixture will be greater than the boiling point of individual A and B. Okay. The boiling point has decreased here than the individual boiling points and here the boiling point has increased than the individual boiling points. Okay. So, now let us see the understand this one. Now, maximum boiling azeotrope will be shown by negative deviation. Can you reason tell me the reason why? See, we have taken A and B. Okay. Negative deviation means what? Their interaction is very strong. They are not going to the vapor phase. So, when the interaction is very strong, when they have become very good friends, if we boil them also, they will, uh, we need a very high like temperature to boil them because they are very, very close to each other. So, when you give, we need a very high temperature, right? Just imagine like this, A and B were there, you mix them and they become very good close friends now. They are not able to separate now. So, when you heat them, you need to give a very, uh, like very high temperature to separate separate them right very high temperature is required. So, that is why it comes maximum boiling azeotrope. Now, what happens you have added A and B they are enemies to each other right. So, if you heat little bit also they will start boiling because they already want to go far away from each other. So, they both will evaporate right. So, that forms minimum boiling azeotrope. So, here also you need to remember the examples nitric acid and water 68 percent and 32 percent is an example of maximum boiling azeotrope ethanol and water with 95 percent ethanol that is example of minimum boiling azeotrope okay so here also i'll write down examples are important examples are important so please remember the examples okay okay so now it's time to practice some questions okay so there are five questions that i'll be doing and one question will be homework for you so, okay, the azeotropic mixture of water and ethanol is there, okay, which boils at 78.15 degrees Celsius. When this mixture is distilled, it is possible to obtain pure water, pure ethanol, pure water as well as pure ethanol, neither uh, water nor ethanol in their pure state. Mm, can you think and tell me the answer for this? Just now I told you an application of the this azeotropic mixture that they boil at same temperature. Now, if they boil at same temperature, can they separate? 
no right so we cannot get pure this one pure this one or pure both we cannot get anything here so the correct answer for this question will be option number d very simple one coming to next question the boiling point of an azeotropic mixture of water and ethanol is less than the water and ethanol individually okay the mixture shows okay so if it is having uh, less boiling point than the individual then it is minimum boiling azeotrope so if it is minimum boiling azeotrope right minimum boiling azeotrope so if you remember minimum boiling azeotrope when we will get when the interactions are very strong right so sorry one second uh, water and ethanol individual okay so now this is minimum boiling azeotrope when we will get minimum boiling point when they are very far away from each other right their interactions is very weak so they easily want to evaporate so when the interactions like when the interactions are weak minimum boiling azeotrope means i can understand that interactions are weak right if interactions are weak that means which type of deviation it is it is your positive deviation right positive deviation in positive deviation what happens their interaction is very weak so they go easily they evaporate right and the boiling point is also reduced so that is why they show positive deviation from the raoult's law okay next coming to question number 3 the vapor pressure of pure liquid a and b are 450 and 700 milli mm of hg at 350 k respectively the total pressure of the mixture is 600 then the composition of the mixture in the solution is okay let us calculate here this is given p not a p not a is a uh, 450 okay and p not b is 700 right okay and p total is given to you as 600 So now, how can we represent this? P total is equal to P not A x A, okay, plus P not B x B. So let me write this. We have this P T. We know P not A. We not B. We know P not B. So I need only one variable. So I'll represent it in different term. So I'll write P total is equal to P not A x A plus P not B into one minus x A, okay. Now if you substitute this, I'll get P not A. Into x a plus p not b minus x a into p not b. Okay. Now you can take x a common here. So what I'll get p total is equal to p not b. Okay. Plus p not b plus uh, I have p not a minus p not b into x a. Okay. So now let us solve this. P total I have is six hundred. Okay, then P not B is seven uh, hundred plus P not A minus P not B. So four fifty minus seven hundred. Four fifty minus seven hundred into X A. So you can solve this equation. I'll get minus hundred this side, and this one if I subtract, how much I'll get? Ten uh, zero minus zero, ten minus five five, then two fifty. Right, minus two fifty into x a. So x a will be equal to hundred by two fifty. Right. So I'll get two by five. That is zero point four. So x a is zero point four. So you can see only one option is there. And if you calculate x b is equal to one minus zero point four. So that is zero point six. So correct answer for this question will be. option number a so this was a previous year question okay so easily you can solve see how numbers are given so that easy calculation can be done okay now coming to next question solution a contains acetone dissolved in chloroform and solution so in solution a what is there acetone and chloroform okay and solution b contains uh, and solution b contains acetone and CS two, right? So now what happens? The type of deviations shown. So this one in this what will happen? There will be hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen bonding means the particles will come together. The attraction is stronger. So this one will be your negative deviation, okay? And this one will be your positive deviation because acetone itself was having very strong bonding, but when you added CS two, they will start separating from. They will go far away from each other. So this one will be positive deviation. So correct answer will be. Uh, option number D. So I told you examples are very very important. So see how direct questions are asked from the examples. Okay. 
Now coming to the next question here for an ideal binary liquid mixture okay for an uh, liquid mixture delta G mix should always be negative okay for any spontaneous process delta G mix should be less than 0. So, it is not equal to 0 it cannot be greater than 0 and delta S mix is also always greater than 0. So, you remember that entropy okay entropy always increases when mixing happens. Okay. So, delta S has to be positive and delta G has to be negative. So, the correct answer for this question is option number D. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, in my last video, I gave you a question okay, to solve and let us see whether you have solved it correctly or not. And if you have posted the comment, so I will check, but you can check now whether you have done it correctly or not. So, now if you see that calculate the mass of urea required in making 2.5 kg of 0.25 molal aqueous solution. So, molal is given that is molality what is the formula here given mass ok given mass by molar mass ok given mass by molar mass into 1000 ok uh, sorry here mass is in kg so I no need to multiply 1000. So, divided by mass of the solvent ok mass of solvent in kg right. So, now let us substitute molality is how much 0 0.25 ok is equal to what is the given mass we need to calculate calculate the mass of the urea. So, that we need to calculate molar mass of urea if you know it is 60 into 1 by what is the mass of the solvent mass of the solvent is 2.5 kg. So, if I solve this I will be getting x is around 37.5 gram ok. So, the correct answer for this question will be option number C ok. So, yes now this question is a homework question for you you have to test yourself whatever concepts we have discussed Raoult's law and then total pressure how to calculate everything you have to uh, apply all the concepts and do a calculation for this question ok and the task for here is you have to comment down the answers in the comment section you have to solve it and comment down these answers ok. So, ok students so that was the end of part 2 of solutions chapter. So, if you have liked this video if you, have, if you are getting help from this video then please subscribe the channel and stay tuned for part, T, part 3 where we will be discussing about the colligative properties the most important topic and also we will be discussing about the abnormal molar mass ok. Very both the topics are very very important. So, if till now you are understanding the concepts you are enjoying this chemistry then please subscribe the channel and one more very very important thing please join our whatsapp channel ok that is very important to get the notes in the pdf format to get the questions. So, everything will be provided and the link of the pdf will be uh, sorry link of the whatsapp channel will be there in our description section ok. So, please go there join it and then you do not miss out on any of these things ok. So, please comment down the answers also let me see how many of you have done it correct ok. Thank you for watching.